All right, y'all. Welcome back to the Yield Behavior. This is Yield Bill. Welcome to the Chill with Bill show, like we always do about that time. Whatever clips, let's get into it. Real quick, is it a green flag if a guy is in therapy? Absolutely. Yes. Gabby? What? Um. Yeah. I mean, if you're not, that's not like a no, but like... Right. I think once you work through like some things that you're really struggling on that might have reflected in past relationships or like hookups, then yeah, it's, Mm -hmm. it's attractive because it's like, you're able to overcome and learn from what your struggles were. Sure. Yeah. I would say therapy is a green flag. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's good. (laughs) And you said yes. Yeah. All right, here's the hot, I'm, I'm going to give the hot take. I think it's a red flag if someone's in therapy. Yep, 100%. Okay, so it's a bigger red flag if they have a mental health issue and they're not in therapy. Yep. But if they're in therapy, getting treated for something, then I, to me, I think that's a red flag. I'd much rather someone who's not in therapy, who doesn't have any issues going on, that's a green flag. You're going to, okay. So I mean, obviously, right. But if you're in therapy, that means you're currently working on something that, that means something has happened uh, outside of the norm, traumatic, whatever. And you are working through that issue. I'm not saying whether it's the right way or the wrong way or whatever. Right. Um, I, I, again, I, I, I've been the whole spectrum of uh, these kind of possibilities. Right. But if you are currently seeking therapy and you are actively pursuing it like kudos that that's a good thing but you're probably not ready to be in a relationship right you're probably working through issues that could potentially lead to negative consequences in dealing with somebody in a relationship whether it's family matters personal matters relationship matters like whatever it is um, you are probably not ready to to be operating in a relationship, right? Because if you were in a relationship and then all started having therapy, that would be because something is going on, right? Something something is going wrong, whether it be within your relationship or outside of it, right? So, um, so getting into a relationship while there's something going wrong is probably not a recipe for success. I'm just saying. Someone who's in therapy for severe bipolar disorder you're gonna tell me that's a green flag okay not even that like that's that's like far left you know what i mean it could just be uh somebody has like social anxiety or um maybe their past relationship didn't work out and they're internalizing a lot of things or or you know maybe they have you know problems with their parents or their siblings or something to that effect like there's a lot of reasons why people could go and see a therapist right so i'm not gonna sit here and say oh just because you know if she's in therapy it must mean she's like there's something going on or he's, you know, he's got something going on like mental disorder wise. That's, that's pretty heavy, but nonetheless, like if you're in therapy, you're working on things, which again, kudos, that's great. Right. But if you're if working on things, doesn't necessarily mean that you're ready to tackle um, the larger, the larger situation, which is a relationship. Just because somebody is bipolar doesn't mean that they can't function like normal people. And just because it, you're in therapy doesn't mean that you're like treating something. Exactly. Like you have issues. And just exactly. because you're not in therapy doesn't mean that you don't have issues either. Men, are, well, okay, go ahead. Also, if you're not in therapy, how would you know you needed that help or not? I mean, you can be aware of ongoing, if you have any mental health issues, you, you can be aware of it. How? And just. I mean, if you know your... I just want to go on record and say that most men's problems, 90% of men's problems can be solved by having, being in some type of men group, you know what I mean? Some type of group with other men um, who you interact with on a day-to-day basis, right? Most of the problems that arise in a man's life can be handled um, by actively being involved with other men who operate in the spaces that you do, right? Or in the same fashion that you do, that you can relate to, that you can bounce ideas off of and do all these things. Therapy, therapy um, for most men usually um, should, it, it is reserved for either mental illness um, or some type of like 
post-traumatic stress, like something outside of the norm that most men don't have to deal with, right? You go to war, you know, family issues, like whatever it happens to be, um, uh, you know, past childhoods, like whatever. These are, these are things that, you know, maybe you have to explore options that most men don't really recognize, don't really see, you know, but 90% of men's struggles and problems can be solved um, and worked through by being around other strong masculine men, right? Like that's, that's how we work. You have borderline personality disorder. If you know you have a BP or a bipolar disorder, if you have some other uh, disorder. But some people can't choose what disorders they have or don't have. Of course, I'm not, but I'm just saying in terms of if, if I'm looking for a partner and the girl's like, Yo, I've got fucking crazy bipolar and I'm, I've got BPD and... What if she's like, oh, like I'm just checking with the therapist here and there just to have someone, like a, someone from the outside world giving me advice or their outtake on things. It also, that's not, I mean, that's not terrible, but... It also helps because when you don't work through a lot of issues and like there are select few people in the world who, you know, like go on for most of their life who probably don't have as extensive mental issues as other people but let's say you end up with a girl who you really really like and you want to build a future with her and she has mental issues like it's going to reflect in your relationship i don't want to have not, <laughs> no, i don't want to have a relationship with yeah her. How, are, how are you getting there in the first place right if she's got mental issues how are you getting to a point where you really really want to have a relationship with her like something else is going on there you know? girl who has mental issues so if you yeah. really no liked offense. her and she was like why, I why have you should why heavy can't depression you'd be like okay bye how why we, can't i have my my yeah. own preferences Honestly, that's up for you to decide that's just my preference but i don't think it's like a red flag that someone's in therapy for me, I, th I think it's... Yeah, you're not ready for a relationship. That's a total red flag. Like, it, very few problems require a therapist. Or, 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 sorry, I shouldn't say that. There are very few problems that are easily worked out that require a therapist, right? Like, if you're seeing a therapist, it's because you've got something to work on. And is that does that mean 100% that you're not capable of getting a relationship absolutely not but it, in the high probability you know the likelihood of probabilities what is it right it's like would you pick one who is or who isn't you know what i mean uh, especially if the one who isn't doesn't have a bunch of other red flags right it's, it's a red flag it shows that they're working on it like they're That's working fine. on something i have i don't have a uh, i don't have anything against people who are in therapy if you want to get therapy, if that helps you, fantastic. But for for a partner, like looking for a partner, I want I don't want someone in therapy or who needs therapy. No, you want somebody who's stable, somebody who's going to be able to look at problems and and go through those problems with you without losing their shit or behaving in some kind of um, aggressive manner or uh, you know constantly like bringing in negativity or passing blame or doing all these weird like there's so many weird things right that that come from mental illness that. If you have the ability to choose, you know, why are you going to choose that? It, it, again, these women have a tendency to fight for these things that they would never, ever choose. Like, they would never, ever do this. They're, they're, you know, it's that whole, oh, well, it's cool for her. I wouldn't do it, but, you know, she should do the, you know what I mean? Like, it's, why are you arguing for these things that you would never, ever do? You're not going to date some dude who's got, who's seen a therapist on a regular basis, you know what I mean, from previous relationships or problems with this father. Like, that's not going to, that's not going to turn you on, you know, I'm just saying. So would you, like, if you had a partner and then you guys were having, um, like relationship issues, would you go to couples mm -hmm. therapy or would you just break it off? I probably would not, probably would not go to a therapist. What's wrong with therapy? Like what is the stigma for you around it? Okay, well, I'd say the first thing is, are, are we talking about the couples therapy thing or are we talking well, about- talking if, about you because you're talking about people who go to therapy for themselves. So. What is the reason for you that it like what's the stigma for somebody who is going for themselves? I I don't think there's yeah. or why, didn't say would you stigma. go to therapy? Um 
he did. He's not saying that there's a stigma. He's saying that if you're in therapy, it's probably not a good time for you to get in a relationship with me. I'm not going to choose to try to get into a relationship with somebody who's going through therapy. Okay. Is he saying that if you went through therapy in the past and now you're like, you know, you're past all that, that he doesn't want to be with you? No, that's not what he's saying. He's saying somebody who's currently going through therapy, that is a red flag for relationship currently okay you are in the process of of whatever fixing adjusting to coming to like whatever the deal is you're in you're working through something that is probably not conducive to a good relationship right that's what he's saying i think the only scenario where i would go to therapy is if i was dealing with like a a death of a parent and maybe like i needed to get some uh, sometimes the uh, hospice cares will you know how, how do you cope with the death of a loved one there's a few other times that that he may or may not be thinking of like if we went to war tomorrow and you got put on the front lines and you seen a bunch of your homeboys getting their limbs blown off and shit you're probably coming back and going to some kind of therapy right if you go through uh like he said you know a family member, a crisis, you know, your father deletes himself or um, there, you know, there's some type of um, serious loss in your family, somebody close to you, right? Um, something like that happens. Maybe, uh, maybe he's in a hostage situation, right? Like um, he's in a bank and it gets held up and he comes close to death. Like there, there are these events that can happen in a man's life that are not they're outside the norm of standard day-to-day -day interactions and and problems that men deal with that those issues you may need some other kind of therapy and that doesn't necessarily mean talking sitting down and talking your problems out men don't have a, t a tendency to do that we, we have to work through our problems in a certain kind of manner and every man's a little different you know but um if it's something big like that uh ptsd you know whatever that's when when outside help is probably more likely to be needed but Inside of that, the rest of the things that we deal with on a regular basis, yo, you can get that from your homeboys, like who have just been through it. Like, oh yeah, man, it sucked. Went through that, you know, how to do this, how to do that. Yo, don't worry, it gets better. You know what I mean? You just gotta blah, blah 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 blah. Like, and then constantly having your back and working together, like that's that's a man's therapy. Women talk about their problems. Women need to talk about their problems and talk about it and talk about it and talk about it. Like, and and that's how they work through. That's why most of the therapy practice right this is all uh you know women who who enter this practice who operate who you know put together these um uh sops or whatever of uh the way this stuff works like this is a very female-led um uh method of of uh you know communicating or, or whatever um and so yeah it's not really set up for men but like in terms of my life difficulties I would never see a therapist, ever. You wouldn't consider that a life difficulty, what? losing somebody. Like no, I'm talking. I'm talking about life. like, I'm talking just about oh, like life is tough. Like, I just said, I w the circumstance under which I might go to therapy is like, how do I cope Drastic. with the death of a parent? That's maybe or the death of a child or something. If I had kids yeah. and one of my Outside children died, I'd maybe norm. go to therapy under those circumstances. But like just dealing with like the milieu and the fucking drudgery of life. No, all my pro like, see, I think men and women tend to deal with their problems differently. I don't want to talk about my problems. I have difficulties, but I want solutions, solutions to my problems. Exactly. I don't want to talk about my want to do. problems. But what if you don't have solutions? solutions? What's that? Exactly. You said you want solutions you don't want to talk about them but like i think a have you been to therapy yes. yes they don't really they give, give you solutions they have do no, they don't huh have no they don't they sit down and they make you communicate 
right? Talk through and work through your issues by asking you questions and then directing and navigating you through the thought process thereof. It's not a solution. You don't go to a therapist and say, oh man, I lost my job. You know, what am I going to do tomorrow? You know what I mean? And then the therapist goes, here's a job application for the, like, that's not a solution. They don't offer solutions. They'll say, well, how does that make you feel? And what, you know, what are you going to, you know, how's your mind state? And what are you going to do like that? Again, trying to help you arrive to the solution on your own, right? They don't give solutions, right? Whereas men, you know, you if my homeboy comes to me like, yo, I lost my job yesterday, man, it sucks. I'm gonna be like, yo, man, X and X is hiring. Yo, this particular place is, yo, you should look, call this number right here and stop, talk to Pete. You know what I mean? Solutions, right? Like that's what we do. I'm not asking him how he feels about losing his job. Right. I'm giving him I'm telling him, here's an answer. You know, here's something to hold you over until you make it happen. You know what I mean? Solutions. That's the difference between men and women. Uh, when I was younger, I had some anxiety issues. I had panic attacks. So I saw a therapist and he helped me with my panic attacks. And that was so like if you met someone and they had panic attacks and they were seeing a therapist, you would not want to see them. Or if you met somebody and they were seeing a therapist because I think panic attacks. What he's saying is, is that if he was seeing somebody at the time they were seeing a therapist for having panic attacks, they wouldn't be the best candidate, okay, for for starting off a new relationship. Okay, that's what he's saying, right? He's not going to seek out that person, right? Attacks would be okay, but I think most people are in... Actually, you might... You've maybe changed my mind a little bit on this, so... It, I guess it depends what they're in there for, but I mean, generally speaking, uh, I'd say generally speaking, no, I would not want to date someone who's seen like, a therapist. I think it's more of like a resource. Like you said, like if your parents passed away or like something or a loss of someone and you didn't know how to deal with it, you would use a therapist as a, re a resource to get a solution or to see insight. So like that would be the reason you would go. But then uh, someone else could be like, it doesn't have to be like dread. Most often than not, a man is going to seek um solace in the words and the wisdoms of another man who has been through that problem a man who he respects who he admires who who you know he sees to be um on his level or or above right um he, he he's gonna take the words of that man and he's gonna run with that like most men are gonna do that and they're gonna process how they process they're not gonna go to a therapist to try to like work through those issues and uh, at least not most men right getting life it could be like losing a really good job how do i deal with this like you no. know like someone can't find a solution how you may be able to find a no. solution if i just lost my job i'm not paying through okay well that's probably not the best example but i'm saying like losing a parent could be one and like you i said different. that yeah yeah and losing then, a like, parent Someone doesn't go to therapy for just dreading life. They can go for uh, that's a big fat reasons. negative. That is an absolute big fat negative. People go to therapy for all kinds of crap nowadays. Okay, all kinds of it. And women, women like y'all, <laughs> more women today need therapy than ever because y'all have are most of y'all are brought up with no structure, right? I mean, most men are too, right? But again, we, we work through our problems differently, right? So most men hopefully can find a way to navigate using the men outside of their immediate home as a resource for processing, learning how to process through these things, right? Whereas most women don't do that. You know what I mean? Y'all talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. But nobody's offering solutions that not only help, but that you can that are tangible that you can make stuff happen and go okay i could see the results from this right away you know what i mean that that's a difference and a therapist doesn't do that they're not supposed to anyway um they're supposed to quote unquote help you come up with the solution yourself right? or like if you like you said you wouldn't go see a couple's therapist but like if you were with someone and you really like them and you guys can't find a solution what's wrong with getting a solution another way just like you would go get a solution well to your so I'll, I'll tell you one of the reasons why i'm sort of against therapy is therapy is kind of anti-male so what did i just say what do you mean anti-male therapy like Set the american psychological association yeah. eric can you look it up um it's like american psychological association uh the ratio maleness i'm trying to see if i can um 
I don't know if it's the American Psychological Association. It's one of these organizations. Um, and they said something about how masculinity, fuck, I'm trying to find it. Um, masculinity is... The point is, is that it's mainly women, a system built by with women, designed by women to function and, and whose wheels turn in the way and mechanisms that women's do. It's not, you know, I'm not trying to like, I'm not talking shit. I'm saying like, that's what it's the way it's designed. Right. And so th you're using, um, female based tools to solve male problems. And, and it's like, you know, uh, square peg in a round hole it's it's we're not the same right harmful masculinity and vi i i fuck i wish i had this ready to go but i don't all i have to say oh is here we go narrowing down your options to like just kiki <laughs> like, are you saying not every woman is in therapy but you have like a lot of like <laughs> but many women bo many women belong in therapy and you know what to hell with you for shaming him for his preferences. Y'all got a lot of stipulations, okay? Y'all got a ton of stipulations. He just don't want her to be crazy, okay? He don't want her to be overweight. He would probably, you know, want her body count to be lower, right? I don't know if he wants her to be religious. These are not abnormal things. Y'all are just, the fact that y'all don't meet any of these marks, right, is is what's triggering. And and so now he's limiting his self down to the doll, right? But like, a, so a woman can't even go through things in her life to need therapy. That's a lot of people. They don't even have to have a mental illness. It's just life. Like life happens. Yeah, also no, life, life happens when developed. you make a ton of mistakes, right? If women and men if fathers were in the household a lot more, if they were acting, if they were doing whatever, if they were there to say, no, don't do this, this is this is a mistake, and y'all actually listen to them <laughs> instead of your friends, right? You wouldn't have to go through so much, right? So, like, if it's not a potential partner, it could be someone that you're already dating and they developed it over time. Like, let's say um, if you were married and you guys were gonna have a kid, that woman could develop postpartum depression and it stays with her after that. Like, would you still wanna be with that partner? I mean, he's in a marriage there, at there, that point. Like I said, there are so, some circumstances where therapy is fine. Mm -hmm. But look, the point I'm trying to make is, is if you're seeing a- and, and To be clear, if he's married and she has a kid and then goes through postpartum depression and needs a therapist, that is a red flag that this person is going through something right now. The, if he were to, the fact of the matter, he's with her, they're married, right? So it's not like he's going somewhere and he's going to be like, let me know when you're done and I'll be back. Like, no, of course he's going to go through it with her, right? But that doesn't negate the fact that at that moment in time, that is a red flag as to her stability, uh, as to her ability to, to you know, ha uh, um, not just behave, but to think and to operate in a manner that is conducive to a positive relationship, right? If, if, if it wasn't considered a red flag, it wouldn't be, um, it wouldn't be a, a, enough of an issue for her to have to go to therapy. But because it's an issue, because it's an issue big enough to require therapy, that is what makes it a red flag, right? For that moment in time. A therapist, for example, and you have severe mental, it's, it's kind of less the, I'm in therapy and it's more, what are you in therapy for? That's the issue that I have. It's what not strictly that you're in therapy. It's why are you in therapy? Are you in therapy because you're dealing with some crazy fucking baggage from an ex? Next. I don't want to, I don't want to deal with but a girl that doesn't have anything to do with therapy. You're just like, I don't have any crazy baggage from an ex. So why would I deal with someone having crazy baggage? from? No, it does have something to do with therapy. It's just a red flag. It is a sign as to, he doesn't have to know that it's, it's a bad ex that there's some issue. Like he doesn't need to know your business. Right. But if you're in therapy and it ain't for something like what he's saying, you know, postpartum depression, or you just lost a parent, you know what I mean? It ain't for something like that. You're in therapy, especially if it's relationship related. You ain't ready for another one. You're not ready. Like you're not.
your mess. Yes. And as simple as that. But it's not the yeah. therapy aspect. It's just like. But they're in therapy. It is. It, yeah. it is. To deal with that. But you're not. But therapy means you are in the middle of the process. You are processing whatever the issue was. You're processing to get to where it's no longer an issue. And for him to come in the middle of you processing that, it's just not a good, uh, on the balance of proper abilities, it's not the way you not Like, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to see you because you're in therapy. I'm not going to see you because you have a crazy ex. I'm not going to see you because you have mental health issues. I'm not going to see you because you're yes. bipolar, not because you're in therapy. Like you should get therapy and you should get that help, but I don't want to see you. Yeah. But yeah. He doesn't want to see you because you're in the process, right? You may not have that crazy ex anymore. You may just still be dealing with the after effects of that situation, right? He's not tripping on the ex. He's tripping on the fact that their after effects are going to affect him, right? you are in the process and the therapy is a sign of the process. So he doesn't want to come in the middle of that process, right? It's just a preference uh, and it's completely understandable. He doesn't have to, he doesn't need to know all your tea. You don't have to tell him all the ifs, ands, or buts or why you're there and what's the, cause that's not, it's probably not even his business. You know what I'm saying? But he can see that, you are currently in the middle of the process. I'm not going to step into this in the middle of you going through your process. But, but therapy is kind of the beacon that would point to someone either having a mental health issue or having some baggage from a past relationship, having some sort of past trauma. And hey, look, that stuff happens to people. Go get your therapy. That's great. If it helps you, perfect. But do I want to date someone that... Yeah, and, and what he's not saying is afterwards... Right. If we show happen to be on the street and bump into each other, I won't. And, and you've gone through that process. It's no longer an issue. Right. You're not going to be in therapy. He's not going to be. That's not going to be a red flag anymore. You know what I mean? There's nothing to see there. Right. There's just now you can continue on the process of getting to know a person. Is coming to the relationship with a lot of baggage? Yeah. No. For me personally, Probably not. And that's okay. <laughs> it's okay. okay, like, for your own personal preference, what you it's want It's just my do. preference. And so, basically, you're just like, therapy just sparks a red flag of why are you in therapy? Yes. Okay, yes, which you, is fine. You yeah. could be going to, th you could be in therapy, and if the, the reason in terms of, I'm looking at you and I'm like, hey, I want to date you, and if it's just like, oh, you know, you've got panic attacks and you're seeing a therapist that you know, they're helping you with your panic attacks and anxiety, whatever. I mean, that's okay, right? But it really depends, I guess, like you said, the reason why they're in therapy. So, but like I said, you know, the whole therapy thing. I don't and let's be clear, he's got to be okay with asking you why you're in therapy. You got to be okay with him asking you that. And you got to answer back, right? So these are all very sticky conversations, right? That are difficult to have, especially if you're just meeting somebody. And so he's saying that as a whole, I'm just, if you're in therapy, ah, you know what I mean? Like, let me just step back and find somebody who's not right. I don't know. It's kind of seems very anti-male to me. It is. Um, so 100%. Can I ask a question? Sure. Why do you think it's like that? Why I is it anti-male? Mm -hmm. Well, I think, um, there's a kind of a, seems to me to be a bit of a uh, undertone going on of uh, it's the same. He's ha he's like trying to figure out how to say all this. It's the same reason why colleges are not set up for men. Right. It's the same reason why women dominate in uh, college uh, acceptance and uh, college graduation. Right. Because classes and classrooms and that higher education is set up, it's conducive to the way women think and learn and operate, right? Men kind of are focused on things, women are focused on people, right? It, 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 it's, and I'm not saying all men, I'm just saying it in general, more men learn by doing, right? As opposed to by talking about it and these office settings these cubicles these type you know this type of work this is this is usually not what most men gravitate towards in, in the college rates all the numbers of stats show that right and so that's why all classes now have some type of 
feminine this or uh, uh, you know women's empowerment that or female studies this or feminism manipulated into this or, or whatever it is right um, a lot of classes have that kind of focus and, um, and or aura or feeling or whatever you want to call it and in this particular case psychology the whole that whole field right of therapy and and that function this is all female driven uh and and again you know square peg round hole stuff anti-maleness in a lot of spaces academia is one of them uh and most psychologists it's not typically a secret you know i consider myself politically center left like center center left um but amongst a lot of people on the left or people who are liberal, there's a very strong anti-male sentiment. So I'm not about that. Yeah. Anyways, whatever. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, man. I love you guys. Peace out.